good morning, everybody. Um, for those of you that weren't in the previous session um, and maybe new to today's webinar, my name is Shannon McGowan and I'm the Rethink Programme Executive at Business in the Community in Northern Ireland. So Rethink is an initiative that was created in April of last year um, and its main aim is to increase resilience within our communities and within individuals. Um, so we're given funding to do workshops like this this morning and we're really lucky to have Dr. Caroline Burrow, our clinical psychologist from Northern Meadows Therapy, here to discuss um, how, we can or how we can overcome challenging thoughts and unhelpful thoughts. And I suppose we have 60 to 80,000 thoughts every day, so they're not all going to be positive and we are going to have those automatic negative thoughts. Um, so again, like last time, we have a jam-packed hour. If you do have any questions or concerns, please do write them into the chat box um, and we can get those answered for you. I'm sorry if my Wi-Fi is a bit unstable today. I'm working from home um, and there's a few others working from home, so just know I could be unstable. Um, but without further ado, I would love to introduce Dr. Caroline Burrow. Okay, thanks Shannon. Hi everyone. Yeah, as Shannon said, today we're going to be talking um, about how we cope with anxiety during this global pandemic and we're going to focus on um, dealing with negative or unhelpful thoughts. Um, so first of all, we're just going to recap a little bit on what anxiety is and how we experience it. So for those of you that attended the webinar um, a couple of weeks ago, there'll be just a recap of some of what we went over there. We're gonna have a, look, a little look at um, how we regulate our emotions and why the pandemic might be increasing our anxiety at this time. And then we're gonna focus on negative thoughts and how they relate to our, um, our experience of anxiety and look at some of the common types of negative thoughts um, and the types of thoughts that might be triggered um, with this particular pandemic. And then we're going to look at challenging these negative and helpful thoughts. So we're going to go through some really good techniques of trying to uh, challenge these, but also some of the ways of dealing with negative or unhelpful thoughts. So that includes things like cognitive diffusion that we'll talk about in some detail and mindfulness. So as Shannon said, if you've got any questions as we go along, feel free to type them into the chat box. Um, that's absolutely fine. Uh, we are on a tight schedule, so um, I may rush through this a little bit, but you'll be having the slides afterwards so you can have a look at them again at your leisure later. So what is anxiety and how do we experience it? So anxiety is that feeling of unease that we get, that sense of worry or fear. Um, it can range from something pretty mild or it can be particularly severe. And when it becomes very severe and intrusive in our lives, then that's when we start looking at kind of disorders um, such as generalized anxiety disorder or panic disorder. It's normal to feel anxious or worried or fearful in certain situations. So it's part of our body's threat de detection system or the fight or flight response. And it, we need anxiety. It helps us to manage dangerous and risky situations. It helps us to move to a place of safety. So it looks after us. But as we say, sometimes it can become intrusive in our lives and it can become over exaggerated. And that's when we might need a bit of help with that. So how do we experience anxiety? So when we are anxious, we experience kind of racing thoughts. Our mind is very busy. We might experience overthinking or difficulty concentrating. We have that sense of heightened alertness, so kind of on guard. Um, we may feel irritable or we may have feelings of dread or panic. Um, with long-term anxiety, we might experience changes to sleep or appetite. So we tend to sleep less when we're anxious. Um, we may eat more or we may eat less if we've got ongoing anxiety. And there's a real urge often to want to escape from the situation that you're in when we're anxious and we want to avoid things that make us anxious. Um, and we might also feel a bit of dissociation. So this is where we feel like we're maybe not really connected to our own body or we feel like we're watching things happen without really feeling it. So some physical sensations of anxiety um, that we'll all have experienced at some point in our lives are sweating, heavy and fast breathing, our heart racing, bit, our heart rate increases. Um, we may get hot flushes or blush. Often we get a dry mouth. Um, in extreme cases, we might start shaking. 
we may get hair loss, um, extreme tiredness or lack of energy, and we may have some kind of physical symptoms such as headaches, dizziness, stomach ache, nausea and vomiting. So how we regulate emotional responses. So those of you that attended the last um, webinar about anxiety will remember that we have three systems um, in our brains and bodies that help us to survive in the world and help us to regulate our emotions. So the first is a threat or self-protection system, which is there to keep us safe. So this um, is activated when there's some kind of threat, either a real threat or a threat that we might perceive. Um, and this is the body's fight, flight or freeze system. So this is related to the emotions of anxiety, um, anger and disgust. Um, and this, the job of this system really is to alert us to some kind of threat and to um, motivate us to do something about it. Then we have the drive or resource seeking system. So this is the parts of the brain and the body that um, drive us to seek resources. So in its purest form, this is about seeking shelter, food, um, a mate. And in the, the modern world, this is about achieving. This is about earning money. This is about um, having a nice holiday, doing well in sports. So this is the system that motivates us to move, to do things. Um, and then we have the soothing or affiliative system. So this is all about rest and digest. This is the emotional regulation system in our body that helps us to calm down, to relax, to bond with other people. Um, and so we have these three um, regulation systems that only come on one at a time. So when one's on, the others are switched off. And when we experience, when that, that system's activated, we experience certain emotions and engage in certain behaviours. So as we said, anxiety is linked to the, the body's threat or self-protection system. And it's a normal response to a threat of some sort. The thing is with our brains is that we can um, respond to a threat that's really there, but we can also respond in the same way to an imagined threat. So why might the global pandemic increase our anxiety? So our threat system is being activated more than usual because we're being faced with these, these threats all the time. Um, and so it's likely that we're gonna fear, feel fear and anxiety because our threat system's being activated. Our drive system, our soothing, our affiliative systems might not be working as well. So it's more difficult to get out of threat mode. So we may not be able to engage in behaviours that normally activate our drive system. So we might not be working in the same way. We might not be playing competitive sport, for example. We might not be able to achieve in the same way that we used to do, which helps motivate our drive system. And we might not be able to activate our soothing or affiliative system as well as we normally do because we might not be able to see people that we love. We might not have any quiet space for ourselves to rest and relax anymore. So we might find it's more difficult than usual to get out of threat mode. So those coping strategies we used to use to manage our anxiety have been taken away from us. There is an actual threat at the moment. You know, there is a threat to health, to ourselves and to our loved ones. And it's normal to feel anxiety given that, that that's going on at the moment. And it would be normal to be worrying for the future at the moment. So we don't really know what new normal is going to be. We may be worried about job security, financial security of ourselves or others. Um, there may be impact on our relationships at the moment. So um, for a lot of people, we may be spending a lot of time with people that we don't normally spend that much time with. Then that can cause a strain on relationships. For other people, we might not be seeing people who we normally spend a lot of time with. And that can also cause strain on our relationships. So again, that's something that may increase our anxiety. We might be worrying about the well-being of others, or we may be having existential worries as a result of changes in how we see and interact with the world with everything that's been going on at the moment. And of course, there is other issues associated with the pandemic that affect our well-being. So changes to routine, isolation, bereavement, etc. And of course, whilst this pandemic's going on, we're coping, we're also coping with normal life stresses. So work, family care commitments, chores, et cetera. Um, and so they can, of course, cause anxiety in our lives as well. 
And if we do have any underlying mental health issues, it's likely that the pandemic is going to exacerbate those. So there's lots of reasons why we might be feeling anxiety at the moment. So how do negative or unhelpful thoughts relate to anxiety? So our thoughts are connected to how we feel physically and emotionally, and they're also connected to our behaviour. So how we interpret or think about a situation affects what we feel about it and it affects what we do in response. So I've got here a little diagram that links our thoughts, physical sensations, emotions and behaviour. So, for example, if we're thinking about I'm going to do a presentation, so I'm going to present a webinar. So I might have some thoughts around that, that I'll forget what. I'm going to say, or I might go blank, or everyone will think I'll, I'm stupid, or it will be awful. And as a result, I'm going to start feeling kind of physical sensations. So my heart might be racing, um, I might get dry mouth, I might start sweating, I might have some body tension, or stomach ache, butterflies. And the emotions that I might be feeling are anxiety. So what's what's going to happen? It's going to all go wrong. I might be feeling some embarrassment. So as a result of these emotions, these physical sensations, and these thoughts, I might avoid the situation I might decide I'm not going to go um, I'm just going to cancel at the last minute or I might talk very fast or I might look at the floor and that these behaviors can um, then exacerbate the thoughts and the emotions and the physical sensations so what we find is the thoughts physical sensations emotions and behavior are all linked to each other so we end up in this kind of vicious circle where each of them make the others worse so by changing any points on this circle, we can we can make things better. So if we have more helpful thoughts, we can we can then reduce our physical sensations and our emotions and change our behaviour. So for example, I'm going to invite you just to write into chat at the moment. Just um, if you saw a friend on the street and you waved to them and they didn't respond, what might you think? I'm just going to invite you just to type into chat any thoughts you might have if you waved at someone on the street and they didn't respond to you, somebody you knew. Um, probably they don't like me. Okay, so that's one thought from Shannon there, they don't like me. And if you were thinking that, Shannon, they don't like me, what would you feel? Um, embarrassed, maybe, or um, upset. Yeah, so embarrassed or upset. And what might you do if you were thinking that and they don't like me? Um, continue to overanalyze it and think about it all day. <laughs> yeah, so wind yourself up about it. Yeah, keep going over it in your head. Great. Any other alternative thoughts that somebody might have if you saw somebody on the street and they waved? We've got a really rational one in here in the chat box and they might not oh, have I'm seen glad me. You can, I'm glad you can see that because I've got nothing in my chat box. <laughs> here. So thanks, Shannon, for that. Um, so that you said a rational one that they might not have seen you. Brilliant. So if you thought that, if you thought they might not have seen me, how would you feel? Just... Carlin, there's three. There's actually um someone says, What's up with him? Um yeah. are they okay? Um are they, the are they okay? Yeah. Uh-huh. The response to the they may not have seen me was they may be preoccupied with other thoughts. Yeah. So if we think they might not have seen me, we might feel neutral, mightn't we? We might just think, oh, well, they didn't see me. So you probably wouldn't do anything or you might, you might, it might remind you to contact them later because you saw them. If we're thinking, oh, what's up with them? You know, why didn't they wave to me? We might feel concerned about them. We might feel anxious about them. That's not like them to wave, not to wave. So we might check in on them. Or we might feel quite angry that they didn't wave. So what's up with them? Why didn't they wave to me? How rude. So we might feel, be feeling quite cross or irritated by them. We might even go up and go, why didn't you wave at me? So you can see how just with one situation, we've got lots of different ways of thinking about it. And that's going to, the way that we think, the way that we interpret that situation is going to um, affect how we feel emotionally and it's going to affect what we might do. So that's the link between thoughts, behaviour, emotions and what we do. 
So by changing our thoughts, by looking at our thoughts and just checking in with ourselves, we can often change our emotions. So this is one way to manage anxiety is to look at the thoughts that we're having. So what are negative or unhelpful thoughts? So often um, these are called negative or automatic ne negative thoughts. Personally, I prefer the word, the, um, word unhelpful and we'll talk a little bit about that later. But negative thoughts are really thoughts about ourselves, others, or the world um, that uh, in general are characterized by negative perceptions, expectations, and attributions. And they're associated with unpleasant emotions and adverse behavioral, physiological, and health outcomes. So when we um, have these ideas about the world, ourselves and others that are characterized by these negative perceptions, um, it affects our emotions and it, it's likely to mean that we act in ways that aren't helpful for us. So these tend to be unhelpful, automatic and familiar. So I often think of them as they're the old stories that we tell ourselves. So there might be things about, oh, I'm no good at this or the world's really dangerous or everybody is, um, everybody's critical. Um, they can often be associated with worry. So this is an expectation that something unpleasant will happen in the future and associated with anxiety, therefore, but they do also um, occur in depression. They can be ruminations. So this is what Shannon was saying, that, well, we keep going over and over and over on something on the same thought again and again and again. There can be negative thoughts about something that happened in the past. And as we said, they're associated with depression and anxiety. And they often come to contain thinking biases or errors. So these are common automatic negative thoughts that everybody kind of makes. So they're thinking mistakes that we all make. So what are these thinking mistakes? So some of the common types of negative thoughts associated with anxiety um, are these thinking biases. So we've got catastrophic thinking, first of all. So this is where we think the absolute worst. So this is where we end up snowballing into the future and everything's going to be a disaster. So I won't be able to pay the mortgage. We'll end up on the streets. My partner will leave me. I'll be living in a cardboard box. So it's this sense of we just like our thinking gets out of control and catastrophizes everything. One of the other types of negative thoughts is overestimating the negative. So, for example, this is where we kind of see a risk there, but we overestimate it, for example. So, all my family will catch COVID and die. So, yeah, there, there is a negative risk there, but we're overestimating it. It's very unlikely that that's going to really happen. We might filter out the positive and only see the negative. Um, so often when we're struggling, we fail to see the positive things in our life and we only focus on the negative things, on the unhelpful things. So there's nothing good in my life since the pandemic came, absolutely nothing, it's just a disaster. And that, um, we can also jump to conclusions. So this is one I'm particularly good at is um, my boss wants a meeting, so they're going to sack me. So we've already jumped to a conclusion. We've rushed ahead. We don't have the facts there, but we've already decided what's going to happen. And another one is mind reading. So um, I just want to check in that nobody's actually psychic here. If anybody wants to admit to being psychic, you can pop that in the chat box. But we do often mind read other people. So we do often predict what's going on in their head or what they're going to do. So for example, my partner looks really grumpy. So they're planning to leave me because they think I'm useless, um, for example. Or personalizing. So this is where we take a difficult situation and we make it all about ourselves. We blame ourselves for it. So it's all my fault that the kids are falling behind on their schoolwork. So not the fact that actually it's really difficult to teach kids, there's other things going on with the pandemic, but it's all my fault that the kids are falling behind. And then we can have all or nothing thinking. So this is where um, we see the world in all or nothing terms. So absolutely everything has been ruined by the pandemic. My life is just a disaster now. Everything's been ruined. Does anybody recognize any of those thoughts? Is anyone willing to admit to any of those thoughts in the chat? Just type in one of the ones that you have, the kind of. Yeah. 
I think can't it's actually minute. see the chat, <laughs> Shannon. At the minute, it's probably more the overestimate and the negative, especially with COVID. Yeah, yeah. And that's really understandable at the moment, particularly because we're constantly bombarded with this threat. So it's likely that we're going to do that at the moment, because if we start watching the news or social media, we're constantly bombarded with this idea of what the threat is. So we're likely to overestimate the negative. There's also a lady who's written in just about um, the personalising one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's a really common one. It's all my fault, Do you know, like, the whole world is is changing and everything, but it's all my fault. It's because I'm not doing it right. Yeah. Okay. We have a very rational response as well. And um, someone has written in that they learn to understand understand that there is no point in worrying about things that you cannot control. Brilliant. And we'll talk about that later. Yeah. That's you know really key is you know if you can control it if you can do something about it great do something about it if you can't let it go find ways of letting it go and we'll talk about that in a minute but yeah that's a brilliant way of managing anxiety is just control what you can let go of the rest so but as you can see these are really common and that most of us have them at least at some point and you know, if we're tired, if we're stressed, if we're hungry, if we're under some kind of pressure, we're more likely to have some of these thoughts. So what can we actually do about them? How can we deal with these unhelpful thoughts? Because we're going to have them. So first of all, we can challenge them. And we'll talk through some different ways of challenging in a minute. We can engage in self-compassion. So we can develop more self-compassion um compassionate talk to ourselves so rather than actively challenge our thoughts we can develop self-compassion to co counteract them we can step away from them so we can kind of turn the radio down on them we don't have to listen to them we can distance ourselves to them and that's what's called cognitive diffusion so we defuse from these thoughts we can become more focused on the present so using things like mindfulness um, to allow us to focus on the present and not get caught up in this this noise that is our heads sometimes um, and exactly what um, one of the participants said we can do what we can to change a situation but accept what we can't change so what we can't change what we have no control over we don't need to worry about we can put that away we can connect with us and talk about how we're feeling and we talked last time about how that really enhances our resilience um, and equally finding other ways to manage our emotions which again we talked a little bit about last time so some challenges to unhelpful thinking so when we get one of these unhelpful thoughts and if you know that you're somebody who has a lot of these automatic negative thoughts a really helpful way thing to do is to make a diary of them and just jot them down and then go through some of these questions so what evidence is there to support this thought is it really true if you had to stand up in court and provide evidence to support your thought what would be there what alternative views are there? So can you widen your perspective? Can you look at different views for this thought? What is the effect, effect of this thinking? Does it make the situation work worse for me? So is it a helpful thought or an unhelpful thought? And am I making it a thinking error? So am I thinking in all or nothing terms? What is the reality here? Is it really always, never, ruined everyone so when we think about all or nothing thinking we often have these words that that kind of encompass that that all-encompassing nature of the thought but is that really tr true am i ignoring the positive so what are the positive aspects of this situation what do i have it right now to be grateful for am i catastrophizing or thinking the worst is this really likely that it's going to happen? So, you know, if I can't pay the mortgage, how likely is it that we're all going to be ending up living under a bridge in a cardboard box? You know, if I can't pay the mortgage, what can I do if this really happens? So, you know, am I just getting ahead of myself and thinking the worst? Am I blaming myself for something that isn't my fault or responsibility? So is it really all my fault? What other factors are there? So like we said, um, it's all my fault that the kids are falling behind on their schoolwork. Well, is it? Or is it that the fact that they're having to be homeschooled 
or that you're in the middle of a pandemic or that actually it's really normal for children not to want to sit down and do lessons you know there's lots of other factors there am i jumping to conclusions do i really know that this is true do i need to get myself some more information about the thought Am I mind reading? So I don't really know what other people think. Can I check in with somebody about what they're really thinking? Um, or am I just making that up in my head? And am I living in fixed rules? So beware of those thoughts that have a should in them or an ought in them or a must in them or a can't in them. So these are inflexible thinking. And the more flexible we can be in our thinking, the more helpful it is to us. So on a practical level, what action can I take? Can I change this, my situation? Can I find a solution? Can I ask for help? And what is the worst possible outcome? How likely is that really to happen? So those are some really good challenges to support on helpful thinking. But what about when actually maybe our thoughts are true you know maybe there is some some reality to them um how can we manage then so what we might do is um also activate some compassionate thinking so using the word think to remind us first of all is this thought true so go through your challenges is it helpful or unhelpful is it important? So if it's not helpful, then we need to find a way of distancing ourselves from it or challenging it or moving away from it in some way. Is it important right now? Is it something you want to put your focus on? Is it necessary right now? And is it kind? So checking in with those and then developing more compassionate thinking. So practicing more self-craft compassion with these thoughts instead and again it's useful to maybe write some of these down so that when you're getting stuck in that feeling overwhelmed feeling anxious those thoughts are racing you can go and look at these and um, and read them to yourself so more compassionate thinking involves things like it's understandable that i feel like this at the moment so of course i'm going to feel anxious there's a global pandemic going on or I'm worried about whatever. Life is hard and other people experience situations like this. I could spend some time thinking about difficulties I've coped with in the past. So as we talked about with our resilience webinar last time, when we resource ourselves by thinking about how we've coped in the past, it helps us to manage difficulties now. I feel threatened, stressed or overwhelmed, so I'm likely to think in a helpful way. This is understandable. So we don't need to beat ourselves up for having difficult, negative, unhelpful thoughts, because when we feel stressed, our brain's going to work like that. So when we're in that threat system, our brain is going to focus on the threats. It's doing what it's supposed to do. But what we can do is remind ourselves that these unhelpful thoughts are just events in my mind. I don't need to listen to them. So I don't need to pay attention to them. I don't need to act on them. Reminding ourselves about the passage of time. So just because things are difficult now doesn't mean they'll always be difficult. And again, perhaps looking at the bigger picture. So right now if i expand my view how does this look like in the bigger picture i'm reminding ourselves that we all have moments of pain or suffering or sorrow or anxiety it's a natural part of life that will pass and also reminding ourselves that you can ask somebody for help speaking to yourself in the way that you would speak to a close relative or friend in this situation so often when we're anxious um, often when we have these unhelpful negative thoughts, we become very self-critical. Um, and so it's catching that self-criticism. So talking to yourself like you would a close friend or relative. And again, in the last presentation, there was a little bit about developing a moment of compassion for yourself there. And just checking in on perfectionism. Am I trying too hard to be perfect? What is good enough right now? So. Am I trying too hard to cope perfectly or to manage perfectly? What is just good enough right now? And that can help reduce our anxiety. So another way of managing these thoughts is 
what we call cognitive diffusion. So diffusing from our thoughts, so stepping, stepping back from our thoughts, separating from our thoughts. So in the diagram there, we can see we have a thought, I'm stupid. And that feels like I'm stupid. So we might notice I'm having a thought, I'm stupid. So that takes it away from I'm stupid to I'm having a thought, I'm stupid. And then we might notice that we notice that we're having a thought, I'm stupid. So that takes us away from it even further, that these are just thoughts, they're not truths, they're not reality. Thoughts are just words and images in your mind. So with cognitive diffusion, we practice noticing the thoughts rather than becoming caught up in them. And we let go of these thoughts. Um, so we let them come in, we don't try and stop them, but we let them go out again, rather than holding on to them. So they don't have to dictate our behaviours. We don't have to act as if they're true. The aim with cognitive diffusion is slightly different from challenging thoughts in that we're not struggling to get rid of them. We're not trying to um, force them to be different, but we're just not engaging with them. So um, it's a bit like a two-year-old having a temper tantrum, that we're not trying to argue with this two-year-old and get them to change their behaviour. We're just going to ignore them for a bit and let them get on with it. So this can be really helpful if our negative thoughts are true. So if we are having thoughts about something that's true in our lives that is difficult right now, but these thoughts are unhelpful, this can be helpful to give us a break from those thoughts really. So remembering if the thoughts are helpful we use, so we use them, if they're unhelpful we diffuse. So essentially this is like turning the radio down on these thoughts, so if it's a radio talking with all these negative thoughts we're just going to turn it down so we don't listen to it as much. So we're going to have a go now at a cognitive diffusion exercise. So I'm just going to invite you to get yourselves in a comfortable position. And if you feel comfortable closing your eyes doing this, just close your eyes. If not, just keep your eyes open and fix them on the floor or a wall in front of you so you're not distracting yourself. And what we're going to do is we're just going to imagine just sitting by a stream right now. So just get yourself in a comfortable position. Close your eyes. And just invite your body to relax into the chair. Just feeling completely supported by the chair and by the ground underneath your feet. And just take a couple of deep breaths. Just inviting your body to let go of any tension as you breathe out. Not forcing your body to do this. It's okay if that tension stays there. But you're just giving your body an invitation just to relax a little bit. And then just bring into mind a stream. So you're sitting beside a flowing stream. You might be sitting on a blanket or on the ground or on a chair, whatever's most comfortable for you. And it's a lovely day, the sun's shining. You can see the reflection of the light on the water. You can hear the sound of the stream as it bubble pa bubbles past you. And the day is a perfect temperature for you. It's not too warm, it's not too cold, it's just how you like it. And around the stream are trees. And you can hear the breeze in the trees, just whispering through the leaves. And as you look down onto the stream, you can see all different leaves floating in the water different colours, different shapes and sizes. And you watch as they come into view. 
can float past you and then disappear off down the stream out of view. So for the next few minutes, take each thought that enters your mind and just place it on a leaf. Let it flow on by. So do this with every thought. So whether they're pleasurable thoughts, painful thoughts, neutral thoughts, just place them on a leaf and let it float by. And allow the stream just to go at its own pace so you don't need to rush the thoughts past. You're not trying to get rid of them. You're just allowing them to float around and disappear as they naturally do. If a leaf gets stuck, that's fine. Just watch it until it's ready to float by. And if the same thought keeps coming up again and again, just keep placing it on the leaf and then watch it float by. And if your mind says, this is stupid, I'm bored, why am I doing this? Just place those thoughts on leaves and let them float by. If your thoughts stop, just continue to watch the stream. Eventually they'll start up again and then keep placing the thoughts on the leaves and watch them float by. And if you notice any emotion or physical sensation coming up, I notice I feel frustrated. I notice myself having a feeling of discomfort or pain. And then just place those thoughts on a leaf and watch them float by. So now just expand your awareness away from the stream back to your body just by moving around in your seat, maybe wiggle your fingers or toes. And when you're ready, expand your awareness by listening to what you can hear around you, so any sounds you can hear in the room or outside of the room. And then gently open your eyes, expanding your awareness to where you are, refamiliarizing yourself with the room that you're in. And when you're ready, just bringing your attention back to the stream, back to the screen, not the stream. <laughs> so I invite you to just type anything into chat about what that experience was like for you or if you have any questions about that particular exercise. Very relaxing. <laughs> Great. And calming, we have calming as well. Good. Great. So I'm glad that people found it relaxing and calming. It, it doesn't always feel relaxing and calming, particularly if we're feeling very anxious and we've got lots and lots of anxious thoughts coming up. Um, it's a, a skill to practice. So it's a really good exercise just to practice a little bit every day. 
And then when you are feeling particularly anxious and you're overwhelmed with thoughts, then you can use it and to better effect. So um, there'll be a handout that can be sent out to you that has that on. Um, so you can have the script for that. You can record that yourselves to listen to. Or also if you type in leaves on a stream into a search engine, there'll be loads of um, audio files or YouTube videos that, that have that exercise on it as well. So you'll be able to find it if you'd rather listen to somebody else doing it. So that's one way of um, engaging in cognitive diffusion and separating ourselves from our thoughts. And it's a really good way to help manage our anxiety. Now, there's some other ways of separating ourselves from our thoughts. So we can externalize our mind. So we can give our mind a name. So thinking about our mind is something separate to us. And when those anxious starts, thoughts start coming up, just saying to yourself, oh, there goes mind again, chattering away again. Oh, mind just loves to tell me all those bad things. So rather than it being you, rather than it, it, it be your thoughts, it's the mind thoughts that's just chattering away. Um, and we might call that, that mind anxious Annie or, um, you know, bossy bob or whatever you want to do just to separate yourself from those anxious thoughts so that you don't have to listen to them and then imagine that it's it's some annoying person that you wouldn't really listen to um the one that i really like is the idea of the radio that won't turn off so imagine you have a radio that won't turn off so it's tuned to the absolute worst station it's playing a soundtrack of all your anxious thoughts all of your so it's about disasters and how it's all going to go wrong and how you won't cope. So you can't turn this radio off, but you can turn it down. So you can imagine just turning down the volume on those thoughts, just not paying attention to it. So focusing your attention elsewhere. And that's one that really works for me, this idea that, oh, there's that old station playing in the background. I don't want to listen to that. I'm just going to turn it down. We can think you're, we can treat your thoughts like a bully on the playground, so a bossy bully. So when we're thinking about challenging our thoughts or managing our thoughts, who's really in charge here? Is my thought in charge or am I in charge? So I don't need to listen to you. You're just a thought. So you can stand up to this bossy bully. And another way of creating some distance with your thoughts is the idea of thoughts for sale. So ask yourself, which thoughts do you want to buy into as being true? So we might have lots of thoughts. We might have thoughts that are self-criticism or it might be comparison with others. It might be over-exaggeration, for example. So do we want to buy into all of these thoughts? Do we want to buy them as being true? So if I do want to buy into the thought that whatever, how much is that going to actually cost me? So you know, is that going to create a lot more anxiety for me? What's the actual cost of this thought? Is it a good investment for me? So that's another way of just distancing ourselves from our thoughts a little bit. So as we talked about, another way of managing difficult thoughts is to practice mindfulness. So mindfulness is moment-to-moment um, -moment awareness, where, which we cultivate by purposely paying attention. So rather than get caught up in the past, um, or the future, we're very much in the present and we focus on what's happening right now. So we focus on purpose to the present moment in a non-judgmental way. Now we could do a whole webinar series on mindfulness, um, but there's lots and lots of great resources out there if you don't already practice mindfulness to have a look at. So there's loads of good YouTube videos, loads of good books out there. Um, but mindfulness helps us with negative thoughts as we can become more aware of our thoughts and not getting caught up in them as much. We can also just learn to distance ourselves. So the cognitive diffusion exercise is kind of like a mindfulness exercise anyway, where we learn to just observe our thoughts without getting caught up in them. And we can accept all our thoughts without coming becoming distressed by them. So we can accept that we're going to have anxious thoughts, but actually we don't need to feel anxious about them. And we don't need to try and push them away or suppress them. So if we think about trying to push our thoughts away, often when we try and push them away or suppress them, that generally makes them stronger. They come back. So we just don't need to engage with that when we practice mindfulness. We can learn to let them go a little bit more.
So if mindfulness meditation is something that you're interested in, as I said, there's lots of resources out there, but it'd be really helpful in managing anxiety and anxious thoughts. So as one of our participants said, it's about letting go of what we don't want to, what we can't control. Um, so we've got a part of the serenity prayer there. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, the wisdom to know the difference. So we've got a worry tree there. And this is a really great thing to use if you're being plagued by worries. So just going through the worry tree, notice what it is that you're worrying about. Is um, So you can write this down. Is this worry about a current problem or a hypothetical situation? So if it's a current problem, can I create an action plan? And then if so, what, it, what is it? When? How? Can I do it now? Great, do it and then let the worry go. If you can't do it now, when will I schedule it to do? Schedule it in let the worry go, change the focus of attention, don't need to worry about it anymore because I've got a plan, I'm going to do that tomorrow. If it's a hypothetical situation, if you can't do anything about it, let the worry go, change the focus of attention. So it seems really simple this, but actually if we sit down and write this out when we're really worried about something, it can be really helpful. The other thing that can be helpful is allow yourself to have worry time. So give yourself 10, 15 minutes a day where all you can do is worry. You're not allowed to do anything else. You just have to worry. And it's actually really hard to try and do that. So what we find is we start off worrying for about five minutes or so, and then we'll start distracting ourselves naturally anyway. So as we talked about in the last webinar, it's really important to connect to others, to build resilience, to help emotional regulation. And in terms of anxiety and, and negative or difficult thoughts, talking to trusted others can help us um, because it helps us to know that we're not alone in how we're thinking or feeling. Um, and often people will share the same thoughts, but it also helps us to put things into perspective. It's a really good way for asking for emotional or practical help if you need it. And also when we connect with others and help other people with their difficulties, that can be a really good distraction from our thoughts. It cultivates compassion for us and um, helps that compassionate flow between us. And it can help us to challenge and cope with our own unhelpful thinking. So it's really good to find ways of connecting to other people. So we're just, going to quickly go through some typical thoughts we might have at the moment and what we could do about them. Um, so we are going to go through this quite quickly because I'm conscious of the time, but as we said before, you're going to have the slides so you can come back to here. So if we're having self-critical thoughts, so for example, I can't cope with all of this, I must be a weak person, I should be doing better or more. So we're criticizing ourselves for what we're doing or not doing. So to deal with any kind of self-critical thoughts, the first response is self-compassion. So reminding yourself, everyone copes in different ways. What your experience is normal. There's no right or wrong way to cope. It's normal to have emotional, overwhelming emotions in this difficult time. So activating that compassionate part of yourself. How would you treat a friend who is struggling? Can you show the same kindness to yourself that you would show to a good friend? And then challenging these thoughts. So specifically, what are my expectations of myself? Are they fair given the current situation? So, you know, when we're self-critical, we often accept, expect a lot more from ourselves than we do from other people. Is that, is that fair right now? Am I comparing myself unfavorably to others? So again, challenging, but also bringing in that self-compassion. And connecting to others. So share how you're feeling with others. So another type of thought that we're going to have during the pandemic is untestable worries that can't be predicted in the moment. So, for example, things will never get better. I'm going to lose everything. I won't be able to manage. So, again, bringing in, first of all, that self-compassion. It's normal to feel this way given the situation. Of course, I'll feel like this right now. And then challenging those thoughts. So I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I'm thinking the worst, you know, I'm catastrophizing. I will be able to cope with whatever happens. Reminding yourself, bringing in that emotional resilience. I've coped with difficult times before. 
I can get help with it if I need it. And then when we can't predict something in the future and we're, we're flying into the future and worrying about that mindfulness is really helpful to help us to focus on the present moment so using mindfulness exercises to help us to focus on the present and move away from the future and also using cognitive diffusion exercises again to separate ourselves from those thoughts so to turn the sound down on that thought you know I can't test this out at the moment I don't know what's going to happen but this is a really unhelpful thought right now so I'm just going to turn the volume down it again connecting to others so sharing with trusted others that you're feeling overwhelmed and again they can help you to get these things into perspective and then the final type of thoughts that we might have, like really typical thoughts we're going to have during a pandemic, are worries, anxieties that are testable. So, for example, if I let my feelings out, I lose control and overwhelm others. So if I show what I'm really feeling or talk to somebody else, I'm just going to end up a big crime mess and everybody else will be overwhelmed. So first of all, again, back to that self-compassion. It's normal to feel overwhelmed by feelings at this time. It's okay to experience these feelings. It's okay to have a cry. These feelings will reduce in intensity eventually. So, but also challenging your thoughts. Is there a way I can test this out? Can I share a little of how I'm feeling with someone else I trust? So, you know, would it be okay to have a little talk with somebody, with somebody that I really trust and just test out that I don't lose control or overwhelm them? And reminding yourself that I've supported others before and not become overwhelmed or there are other people who can support me if I let them in. Um, and that there are professionals that can help me with managing my feelings if I'm really struggling. So that's an example of how we might respond to a worry that's testable. So something I can test right now. So we talked very briefly about this in the last presentation, but again just beware of toxic positivity so we don't have to think happy thoughts all the time and we don't have to always be optimistic um, in fact that doesn't help us um, although it's good to challenge our thoughts and it's good to have an optimistic attitude um, we don't need to be happy all the time because we minimize um, our emotional experience then so reminding ourselves it's normal to feel a whole real range of emotions and remember that right now it is normal for your threat system to be activated so it's normal to be feeling a bit of anxiety it's normal to have negative or unhelpful thoughts we all have them at some point we don't need to be happy and positive all of the time and when we look at stress management and coping skills we need to include acknowledging um, and experiencing painful and difficult emotions and thoughts that's actually healthy emotional functioning being compassionate to yourself means that you allow yourself to be human um, and remembering that you don't need to be productive all of the time as well you don't need to always be um, baking a cake or building a palace in your back garden out of pallets or whatever it is um, you can rest you don't have to always achieve and if you find that you've been affected by this kind of idea of toxic positivity of needing to be happy and productive and achieving all the time um, often turning off or limiting your time on social media can help if you're finding that driving that a little bit so as we talked about last time in managing emotional resilience, um, as well as managing thoughts, find other healthy ways to cope with emotions. So we talked about some of these in the last webinar, but learning ways of resting and relaxing if you don't already do that. Meditation, mindfulness meditation is really helpful. Getting into a good self-care routine, so regular exercise, healthy diet, good sleep habits. Finding ways to express emotions in healthy ways, such as art, exercise, poetry, journaling, et cetera, et cetera, whatever works for you. Staying connected, talking to a trusted others. There's lots of self-help groups out there if you feel like you're struggling and also professional help. And there's some resources here um, in the next couple of slides. So when you might need to ask help. So if you're continually feeling low, or you find that your anxiety is so out of control, it's affecting your kind of daily life, you're losing interest in things you used to enjoy. If you're finding that you've got significant changes in sleep, eating habits, libido, or you're beginning to use alcohol or drugs to help cope with mood, 
um, if you feel that you're feeling hopeless or thinking that life's not worth living or having active suicidal thoughts, if you're withdrawing from others or not taking care of your personal appearance or personal responsibilities, all of these are red flags. So if you're struggling, do reach out for some help. So a speech to GP if your anxiety is affecting you too much, medication can be helpful. Talking therapies can be helpful as well. There's a list there of how you can find an independent counsellor, psychologist or psychotherapist. And there's also a link there for support groups. Um, and then there's some mental well, health and well-being contacts there as well. Um, so that's us for today. Are there any questions before we finish? If you just want to type them into the chat, if there's any questions that you want to ask. That was brilliant, Caroline. Thank you so much. Um, my favourite part was probably the cognitive diffusion. It's such a simple technique to use. Yeah, it's really powerful. And the more you practice it, the better you get at it. So yeah, really good. Um, you have some lovely comments here saying that it was an excellent presentation. And thank you so much. Oh, thank you all. I still can't read chat, so thanks for reading that out for me. I'm not sure why. There must be a setting on this on this end, so I'll change it for next time. Yeah, just really nice comments saying that it was really helpful and that um, they're going to try and put some of those exercises and techniques into place in their own lives. Great, good. That's really good to hear. And I am conscious that I kind of rattled through that pretty quickly. So, you know, do have a look at the slides afterwards. There's lots of information there that you can use. Um, and as I say, we'll also send out um, the handout of the cognitive diffusion um, script as well. So you can have a go at that at home. Perfect. Yeah, I can send that all out um, for everybody. So that'd be brilliant. Great. You have no questions, Caroline. So that's Fantastic. everybody doing well. <laughs> How are we doing for time, Shannon? You've two minutes. Oh, okay. I was going to try and do a soothing rhythm breathing, but we've not quite got enough time for that. So no, I can send. I can send out the the leaflet though. Um, do you have a raised hand here? I'm just looking. No, so thank you again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, good luck to get everybody. And um, yeah, do have a go at all those techniques because they're really, really helpful. And um, be kind to yourselves. Remember that it's okay to feel a bit anxious given that everything's going on. So just look after yourselves. Definitely. Thank you so much, Caroline. And thank you, everybody, for joining us this morning. Okay, thanks, Shannon. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.